Airborne RC. Today I got an unboxing, uh, not really an unboxing, I've had it about a year and a half now. <laughs> it's just been sitting in the pile of stuff that needs to be due currently building the UH-1 Delta. So a lot of people out there that are wondering about these Roband kits, how they come and all that stuff, that's what this is for. This kit right here was uh, ordered from Motion RC. Uh, I want to say about a year and a half ago uh, before the prices jumped up. I think on this one I paid a little under $1,700. Um, the way they come is the way you see it. It comes inside another uh, cardboard box. I went ahead and I did a quick inventory. Motion RC is pretty good with these. These Roband kits, they come from overseas from Asia, obviously. Uh, they come on a shipment container. When they get them, they do a complete inventory. They take every helicopter out, you know, stuff happens, they get cracked, you know, things like that nature. They do a complete inventory to make sure everything is accounted for and everything's in perfect shape. Then they repackage it uh, so it can go in the U.S. postal system, I mean, in UPS, FedEx, however they're going to send it to you, and uh, they get it there. Um, so when you do get these kits... Don't let it sit in the box for a few weeks. Go ahead, open them up immediately. Start going through the fuselage. Make sure you've got all the parts and everything. All right, guys? Well, that being said, this right here is the Roband 700 AH-64 Longbow. Well, let's get started. They make great moving boxes. Moving boxes. out so we got our first box right here everything comes in boxes all right we got our water transfers we'll get a little bit in more about water transfers what's the difference of those between vinyl stickers and you get your instruction manual. Now, if you're looking for an instruction manual like you get with an airplane, an e-flight, an FMS, you're going to be out of luck, guys. This is very... They expect you to... For you to know what you've been doing. You know? So, if you get into roadblocks, oh, this doesn't fit, this doesn't do that, guess what? You just turned yourself into a modeler. All right. So other than this that I cut out, this is how you will get the kits for Motion RC. I don't know if you guys can go ahead and see that. They go ahead, they redo it with bubble wrap so you get it uh, in one piece, unscathed. <clears throat> that one box I cut out was posted right up here. You have another box over here that's going to have your mechanics and parts and such. And then this right here probably is going to be some body parts. You have your fuselage and you have your tail boom right here. All right. So we're going to leave the fuselage for last. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move this stuff off to the side. This right here looks like it's going to be all your tail booms and all your pieces for that. It sure is. So in this one box right here, you have your tail boom. Inside the tail boom, you have all your little pieces right there. Those right inside of it are going to be your tail boom supports. You also have your torque tube. All metal parts, metal torque tube. This is an AH-64. So it's going to have a quad head on it. So you're going to have four blades. One, two, three, and four. Give you some tape. I like to use electrical tape for when uh, weighing and balancing the blades. Be a nice size. You have your tail blades. So you get one of these out. Made all out of carbon fiber. You know, not like really what you get in your 3D helicopters.
I only do this so parts don't get lost. I got a lot of projects going on. And the worst thing is, does this belong with this helicopter? Does this go to the other one, right? get your landing gear. Look how big and stout those bad boys are. I'm going to go ahead and bring these up to the camera so you guys can see it. I mean, those are pretty nice. All metal. Got a little foamy tire. Go right in the helicopter as such. All metal. Suspension. This will go in the front, this goes in the back, and they'll go ahead and go down like that. So you got two of those, one in the front, sorry, two in the front, one on each side, and then you get your small landing gear. You also get your warning on uh, your main gear about shimming for the plate for top and down. You get your other torque tube right here. Uh, it's an elevated tail, so unlike a helicopter, the boom isn't completely straight with the tail rotor right here. That would be the boom. This goes up. It's an elevated tail. You also get your smaller torque tube inside the bag, and it looks like your extra link. This is the head. So here's the head. Now a lot of people will sit there and say that these roll bands don't come with uh, blade shims or blade spacers, meaning they use a 12 millimeter root blade to 14 millimeter outside. See? They do come with spacers. They come with spacers. There's that head. <laughs> that thing looks sick. All metal, generation two. That's gonna look real nice. Now with these rubber band kits, they say that they're almost ready to fly. Kind of gives people a misconception who's not into the scale world. Hey. I can take this thing out and I can go ahead and I can fly it around. Just drop the mechanics, a few bolts together, put in a few slots, and go whip it. Yeah, don't do that. Don't trust these people. Disassemble everything. Everything metal to metal contact gets blue Loctite. <clears throat> Grease everything. Don't put your trust. Don't spend, you know, Fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars just on the model, and then an additional thousand to fifteen hundred on the electronics needed to drive the model just to crash it. This looks like the extra support gear for the trunnion for the bottom of the motor, so it don't tilt on the stator. I'm not going to go through every bag, you guys, because that could take forever. I know you guys want to get to the good stuff, so just so you guys can see all the stuff laid out. I will be opening up the main things, what I would call the main things. There's your tail rotor, all metal, metal gears, all metal gears, no plastic bevel gears in these models. 100% all aluminum. Oh yeah, a little tight as you can see, will have to definitely be freed up, remember I said ARF? You put this sticky thing over there with your servo, your tail would just be doing a slow wag trying to catch itself slowly. Ask me how I know. All right, I'll lay 
laid out all the pieces out of that box just so you can see what comes crammed in this kit. <clears throat> Alright. Remember I told you about the tail being at an angle? This is your angle gearbox, 45 degree. This is where the small one goes up here, so the rotor will be right here, the tail rotor. All metal, more metal gears. Now this comes with spacers. Uh, employ you to get the spacing right on these. You can chew up the gears really bad. Um, parts for these things, um, like the consumables, if you are to get into these, I'd say, you know, buy the bearings or get a whole different bearing set from Boca bearings. Get these metal gears, they do wear out. Uh, if you grease them and you take care of them, as long as you shim them right, they'll last you a while. Don't get it wrong. Right. Now the mechanics, last thing in the box. Now these right here, these are the newer mechanics. And when I mean the newer mechanics, um, a lot of times like you get the fun key models and you put the boot, you know, boom and pod. It's inside where the seats are at, you know what I mean? Um, Air, the Airwolf that I have, you don't see that because it has a computer bay in the back. What Oban has done is they made these L-shaped models, what I call them. And they actually sit in the top of the doghouse. They have this little angle curve. And let me show you what I mean by that. I have a UH-1 Delta that I've been building. Let me go ahead and move it over there. Now they will use the same mechanics rough uh, between the two helicopters, maybe slight changes. So normally, so this is my UH-1 from uh, Roban. I did have to repaint it to the federal standard correct color. I blackened the nose. Other than that, it comes as you see. As I said, I just started building it. But so let's go ahead and open. Okay. Now these mechanics, like you have in a line or something, or whatever, the mechanics you'd see through here. Now these are the mechanics, they're made, I'm just gonna, gonna see if I can do it with the bag on. They will actually sit up here in the doghouse. Obviously I got the bag on. So when you drop this down, they are sitting up here. And you get your full cockpit, which is pretty cool. Snaps on with magnets. I moved this out of the way, guys. I know. Can't you just hear the flight of the Valkyries? Dun 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 dun. dun. Fiber, belt driven, whole bunch of screws, a whole bunch of gears, right? Your servos go right up here, fly bar unit, um, wherever you can go ahead and fit it. Servos do go up here, okay? It is counterclockwise rotating to make it realistic. The motor goes up there, has the adjustment. All these screws, just like an line or a goblin, you get it in pieces and you gotta put it together and put the lock tight. Well, they send it to you, put together. Take it apart, 80% of it will not have lock tight, I guarantee you. Take it all apart. If you're not too sure how to do it, take one side apart and do the other side, but take it apart, make sure everything is lock tighted down, everything's true correct. You know, before you even do it, make sure your ball links are nice and tight. You know, you are the, you know, I, I was a soldier, I got out, I work for the government now. I'm also a licensed registered nurse. And uh, in nursing, we are the last line of defense for the patients. If the doctor messed up on the medications and we still gave those medications, we're the ones that are in trouble. We're the last lines of defense. If I look at it, modeling, we're the last lines of defense. Don't put your faith in somebody else. Um, I mean, if you, 
if you had somebody at the local flying field that is reputable, that's been doing this stuff for years, and you paid him to put it together, I trust it, you know. Don't trust anything that comes directly from overseas. Alright guys, so that's what we get in the first box, is the main mechanics, landing gear, rotor head. Pits on these things are pretty cool. So, got a seat here, a seat here, just like on the model. You got your little joysticks, throttle levers for your elevation, front and rear gunner. Go ahead and move this over to here so you guys can get a closer look. Aren't these things cool? Now, these things run Roban Electronics on six volts. So you gotta use a BEC, don't try and run high voltage to it. So you get it all done. They do throw a few bells and whistles in there. You do have a board. These right here, these are like cutouts of paper and they do light up. You can get actual monitors, little tiny QLED monitors. They look really cool. They have tracking and everything. Um, they're like $70 a piece. I mean, they're for someone that's you're really going to go ahead and do it. Do it up. Okay. It's supposed to be glued. You can see glue on it. Popped right off. Well, that's really nothing. That's an easy fix. See, if, don't expect to get a pristine 100% model. There is no way you can get something made that's this delicate to travel overseas to get to your RC distributor just to get sent to you you know and I love I love the UPS don't get me wrong I had no problems with the UPS um, postal service that's a different story FedEx no nope, not so much So as you can see on the mechanic side, on the longbow, there really isn't much on it, right? Some models, such as the Airwolf, yeah, that took me a long time to build. Uh, so many moving pieces, the landing gear, the cockpit, you get all, all the fuselage pieces to get straight. And then on top of that, you got to get the mechanics to get it flying right. It's just, it is a lot. Alright, we go ahead and get a stand out for this. So you guys can go ahead and see this bad boy. And take your time when you guys take these things out. You know? Don't rush it. You rush it, drop it, get it snagged, scratch the side of it. Then you gotta start matching paint. Doing a whole bunch of stuff. Alright, that was Alright. Huh? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and move this box out of the way so you can see the helicopter in its entirety. Get the 
the steel boom. It's a two piece tail boom. You put the mechanics in here. Tail boom, you're going to line everything up. It's held on by six uh, holes that you'll drill with wooden blocks in the back with Loctite. A lot of people, a uh, guy I know up in Phoenix, made this a one piece fuselage um, with uh, Bondo and a whole bunch of other things and such. Maybe I can get this to stay on. Sorry about the lighting, but this is my little hobby room, what I'm confined to. The cockpit just drops right in there. this thing comes off guys we'll go ahead and put the phone back we'll go ahead and just place the phone down real quick so you just go ahead and pull it it's held with really strong magnets it's the canopy right there it's got all the glass in it and that's the inside Battery bay, batteries will go right there. You have to manufacture almost everything. Your mechanics will slide all the way down there. There's your hole to your tail boom. <clears throat> well guys, that's pretty much what you get in the kit. The rest of the things that you have to go ahead and you have to pick up. Uh, motor, ESC servos, fly bar unit, receiver, UBCs if you're going to go ahead and run it. Like I said, everything runs on 6 volts. The Roban uh, electronic parts of it. Using a little piece of tape to hold my phone, if you guys can't hear it. Alright guys, last box that was at the bottom. This comes with all your little scale features. So these two right here, these are the winglets right here. These are the pieces that go onto the side of the AH-64 that carries your ordnance. Okay. These are the legs right here that get attached to it right here. These are what carries your ordnance. Now it comes with two sets. It comes with a set of rocket pods. And it also comes with missiles right here. How cool is that, huh? Vertical stabilizer. Here's all your little scale features, your sensors. Your other little scale bits that you're going to go ahead and throw on. There's your cannon. All those pieces. Like I said, it's like a model to put it together. Front end for the radar. All that right there. Gets mounted in the front. I will be running um, that autonomously on a servo as well. With the pilot, with the gun. So pilot's head moves, everything moves. More scale bits. And then your bag of hardware. 
Those are the pieces right there used to hold the tail boom on, tail support, servos, just all your little extra odds and ends and radio antennas. So that pretty much comes in one box at the bottom, and that's just all your little scale uh, tidbits that, that go on it, like I said. On top of doing the mechanics, put the tail boom, getting everything aligned and running right, you also have all this stuff. Yep, like I said, you still have to supply all your own electronics, so that right there is like about 900 bucks or so. It would be up to 1500 depending on how local you want to get. Now, the helicopters come with a standard scheme. This came with the longbow uh, right here. Uh, these are water transfers. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Cali graphics, the final stickers, you just you stick them on. But if you want to move them around, you know, you put some soapy, warm water, and you can move them around. That's this principle right here. So you'll go ahead and you'll get this little sheet book. We won't open it up quite yet. So, so this is basically what you guys get. You, you'll get the United States. Try not to damage these guys. No, we'll just do it like this. So you get the shark's mouth for the front. I don't know if you guys can see this. And then you got your United States Army for the tails right there. I might use these. I might go ahead and get them from Kelly Graphics. I might send these into her to get them redone. I did get ones done for the UH-1 Delta. You got your <clears throat> unit right there. Tail numbers, danger for the propellers. You got all your little, you know, danger, high voltage. You got your stripes for the motors right up on top. Uh, these right here, these are water transfers. You cut these out. You would dip them into water, wait for them to uncurl, and you basically, they, a lot of people call them water slides. They're a little, like, piece of plastic, thin. It's actual paint. So you're actually sliding this paint graphic off. It's pretty cool. If you can get it done with no wrinkles and everything, it's pretty awesome. Now, the reason why I like Cali Graphics is, is if you mess up with the graphics, you can always order more. These are the ones I had made for the UH-1 Delta. U.S. Army. It's going to be a tribute theme. It's going to be Mr. Groovy from 11 ACR. So those will go on the doors. That right there is the 11 ACR crest. That's going to go right on the front of the nose of the UH-1 Delta. Tail number. All right. We also got the danger and the side emblems for the back where it's U.S. Army on the boom. Now another little thing is I uh, kind of don't want to let people know, but yeah, why not? So they had these rocket launcher pods on the UH-1 Deltas, and a lot of times they would paint them, and they call them beer cans. So I'm going to actually have those on here, uh, rocket pods. already 3D printed the rocket heads, the whole schmank schmack. And uh, what do you guys think, huh? That'll get wrapped around one of the rocket pots like a beer can just like they did in Vietnam it's my little extra touch on got those from Cali graphics um, this was right here was the first time I used her for, on like a custom thing you know other times I just bought what she had available because I had the aircraft what she had for sale over here uh, I went ahead and she did these up I think she charged me like $35 
you know. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, by the way, I drove through your little area in New Mexico. That's an interesting place. You guys got a lot of elk out there. It's crazy. All right. Well, guys, that's about it. This is pretty much what you guys are going to get in uh, the kit. Let me go ahead and take this off so nothing bad happens. And uh, if you guys are interested, uh, got any comments or anything, go ahead and comment below, subscribe, and give me a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell as well. Um, I love helping people. If you guys got any questions, if you guys are getting into any of these things, which way you're going to go, if you've been flying hills, whatever, go ahead and drop me a line. Other than that, thanks for going and joining us at Airborne RC. Hook.